Hello, everybody. Welcome to this first in a series of videos on doing research in high school like a college student. Uh, this is aimed for all Metro Nashville students, particularly those working on the senior capstone paper. And if that's you, hey, welcome to your senior year. You've made it. I'm Jason Prophet at Hunters Lane High School, uh, broadcasting this to all students in Metro Nashville Public School. Going to walk through a bit here what are common problems that students tend to have uh, starting to research the capstone paper and why it's important that we get out of the mindset of doing a lot of the things in high school that we've tried to do to research before because a lot of them don't work, particularly when we start to write longer compositions like the capstone paper. And a lot of traditional high school tricks, they lead to a lot of writer's block, staring at blank screens, just repeating yourself, having to start things over, go back, and it ends up not working and causing a lot of frustration. And I really wanna talk about why researching like a college student, doing professional research is the way to go to get through the senior capstone paper. Of course, people other than college students do good research, but since a lot of our students go to college, and some don't, but many will also go into careers where they do research, I use a college student kind of as a stand-in. So we're really gonna look here at this presentation at four problems that high school research t typically has to have. That's bad sources, that is sources that don't help you. Bad repetition, that is just finding the same information over and over and over again and not really going deeper and help explore the topic. Bad generalization, that's not getting very specific in some of those things that we find only seeing one side of an issue, there may be some bias in it. And bad collecting, that's the problem of losing research, not knowing what research to use, or not being able to cite research because you don't know where it's coming from. And our goal is to look at a bit of this today. For those, who, if you are watching this in the senior capstone context, uh, here are some basic problems over this video series we're gonna try to look at. The senior capstone paper requires five professional sources. That means not Yahoo Answers. That means not Quora. Uh, that means not just Wikipedia, though we're gonna talk in a later video about good ways to use Wikipedia. You need six needed for an A+. The paper itself is supposed to be 2,300 words, introduction through conclusion. It needs to have a works cited page and professional citation format like MLA. If you're not sure about those, ask your capstone teacher, ask your English teacher. We may get to talk about them in a future video. Uh, remember, this is general. This is going out to a lot of different kinds of capstone classes around Nashville, so it may vary slightly uh, for your program, your teacher, your high school. Nobody's trying to pull over the wool over your eyes, but if you're in a general senior capstone class, your requirements probably look something very close to this. So here's some general facts about research that I think uh, most high school students need to be aware. Most of my students enter senior capstone and they think the longest part of doing the paper is the actual writing of it, the time where they actually sit down in front of a computer and type out the paper. And they think they'll knock out the research in a day or two. But that leads to a lot of problems. The research should actually be the longest part of, of the process. You need to become an expert at your topic before you try to write about it. Otherwise, you won't have content. That follows a certain logic. If you don't know something about a topic, you're going to have trouble finding enough to say about it. So it's very important that the student goes and tries to find the research. Otherwise, you end up with writer's block. And there's no worse feeling when trying to write a 2,000 or 2,300 word paper and you type out everything you've found out from your three or four quickly Googled sources and you look down at the bottom of a word counter on Microsoft Word or, or you use the word counter in Google Docs or, you, or whatever program you like and you have 700 words and you realize you have at least 1,600 more words of things to fill. And that's the problem as in your sources all said the same thing. They didn't get around enough side of the topic. You need to do more research. That student with that problem staring at the blank screen, they weren't ready to start writing. They should have found more research. They should have made better outlines. Uh, they perhaps should have narrowed their topic a little more. If you want to avoid that feeling of, I just don't know what to say at all, not I have a lot of information, but I don't know where to start, that's a problem for a later video, and it's very normal and part of the process. You've got to have good research. And for my successful Capstone students, the research is the part they spend the longest on. Reading sources, finding better sources, judging sources, getting information from sources, and continuing to narrow their topic. Uh, the ones who do long research, they have to start over a lot less 
because they're becoming experts. They have to go back and they're not re and look for things anymore. And they don't, and they become l less frustrated. And a lot of times when my students become frustrated with the capstone paper, where they want to actually go change their topic, they want to do something completely different because they think that's the only way. And that's the problem when in reality, they just need better ways to get information for the thing that they are interested in. If the student just changes over and over again, they're gonna just keep repeating the same process over with all their topics. What you need to learn to do is research like a college student, and this video is sort of the first step in looking at that. And so, again, we talk about the student. If you, it, poor research will create writer's block and you end up, if you know my students, I have to throw a meme in somewhere uh, and you end up here like this Indiana Jones villain. Um, this is like some of my capstone students when they've found three or four sources and they've kind of half read them and they're staring at the computer and they're wondering, uh, what am I actually going to be doing here? Well, if you actually make a plan, if you find a lot of information, you'll have a lot of information to tell people. And figuring out what you're exactly going to say becomes less of a problem. It's not automatic. They're still outlining. They're still thinking about what do people need to be introduced to, to understand things like how I do. But I'll just say this. If you, through research, do not understand the topic yourself, uh, you have no chance and you're more likely to become skeleton man. Then write something that people want to read and is interesting. And we want to write things that are interesting to read and enjoyable. And so that's why we need to do better research, to invest a lot of time in research, to ask our teachers to help for research, to ask our school librarians for help with research, uh, to find experts, to interview people who know something about the topic and ask them for help on research, to go to libraries or to have books sent to us from libraries, to search through databases um, and to do source mining. And that is why we need to do good research. Otherwise, it's just gonna become painful. And so again, we're looking at these four problems, bad sources, our sources aren't helping us, bad repetition, our sources are all sell telling the same thing, bad generalization, it's not getting to the heart of the matter, maybe there's bias, and bad collecting, which is, we're just finding a bunch of stuff, we don't know how to keep it, use it, and work with it. Um, so let's talk just briefly, just sort of conceptually about each of these and how a college student, how a professional researcher might seek to begin to address them. We'll get into the hows in a later video, but we really kind of need to hit the why here first. So the problem of bad sources, and by bad sources, we mean the source is wrong. It doesn't have citation information. Um, it's it's out of date, It was it, which means it was good at one time, but now it's not. And so if you enter college, it's, it's really important, I think, when we try to write about something in depth, that we get things from people who have worked on that issue professionally. It might be someone who studied it, someone who's worked with it, someone who's experienced it with it. But this is our often first problem. Um, we need to find good sources. This is not answer sites. Um, this isn't just anything people can edit. This, these aren't sources without authoring information or source information. Um, or anything to help you verify that it's accurate. And that is often, sadly, uh, the first things that come up if we just do general web searches on things. Not always, but a lot of advertising websites or answer websites, uh, you know, they make their web optimization so they come up higher in something like a Bing or a Google web search. And the best quality stuff may not be immediately visible uh, on the internet or it might be behind a paywall. And that's sometimes why we have to do more professionally searching things. And I, and I tell you, if you want to become an expert at something and really share your knowledge with people, you're reaching the age where just Googling things isn't going to be good enough. Uh, the other problem is bad repetition. And I think sometimes my students kind of understand problem one well, but problem two kind of is, is sort of the first trap of if you don't understand problem one and you do start googling things like i have had so many students and i teach in a health academy uh want to do projects on nursing and they, they should really write that topic out as a question but let's just say they want to do something on nursing and so they google nursing and they present me with a bibliography on the first six things on nursing that they found and they start writing about them and they all say the same thing they all say what nursing is and generally what what people from nursing have to learn 
but that's what all six of those sources say and the kids write that down and they have very little information uh, because it's really just general stuff so I'll just repeat 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 what they need is a little more variety they need to take that topic and you know how does what types of nursing are there in 2020 how do each of these nurses get educated what, what are the daily problems that these certain types of nurses have to deal with um, how does that look in different countries you really want to create a lot of questions about that and find professional sources dealing with those and that that often comes like with problem one into where we do our research be that be that in a live place be that with a person or be it in an electronic database we need to find sources that deal with lots of sides on the topic and not just repeat the same thing the capstone paper is not a race to get to five to six sources it's a it is a quest to become an expert at something to deliver analysis opinion and information and explanation about it not just to find things that repeat themselves and then add our writing to that repetition so bad generalization uh similar to problem two we're having uh, someone is generally talking about about an issue problem but they're not looking at all sides of it uh, something might be biased um and someone is not really going deep into something if, if you're gonna write nine and a half ten pages about something you're gonna have to go deep into it too and deal with the complexity like so just don't tell me about the sport of football tell me how it was founded tell me about different types of football all across the world tell me about people's different opinions on it just don't tell me you know what a nurse does you know tell me how nursing has changed over time tell me how working in a hospital is work in a general hospital is different from being a nurse in a psychiatric ward tell me about the different educations for that necessary just don't tell me what a robot is tell me about theories of robots ethics around robots how different sort of robots are built what kind of robots are being made now um, get into the weeds and the, and that's sort of the step next step when you hit the outline is to sort of generate those kind of chapters and start researching for those and finally bad collecting I have had sadly too many students who put in a good day of research and they just lose it all and that comes into collecting and sorting what we find remembering our websites and being able to keep track of things am I going to save things to PDFs on a folder or are they going to be on a web account like a Tennessee electronic library am I turning things into a teacher are they going in a portfolio but things you find that might be useful to you have a system to keep and sort those or you're just starting over and so here is sort of the process for researching like a college student that, we, that I sort of want to put here forward this idea at the top of the page you're developing an interest hopefully in a capstone topic by now if you don't have an interest in a topic I really suggest at this point uh, that you talk to your teacher that you sort of think about things that interest you because um, you really need that to do the next step and now what we're beginning to talk about is doing beginning research and if you're at a good place in this video this is now the point uh, where you are ready to start doing that do that beginning research now do that is through that process is you research you find more interest on your topic and the idea is that your topic does change a little that you that it becomes narrowed and focused where it goes from oh I don't want I it's not a project on nursing I want to do I want to do something on the history of nursing I want to do something on becoming a pediatric nurse um, you know it's not I want to do something on working on cars it's I want to do a paper comparing different types of car engines that it's not you know how does business work it's like locally how do I make a business plan um, the idea that we continues to narrow it and then you generate subtopics inside that I'm going to talk about this overall topic and I want to fill this in I'm going to talk about this part of it this part of it and this part of it and that's where the, the more focused research comes in so that's your goal sort because your overall topic kind of becomes your heading and then through the research you want to build out chapters into it you want to build out sections of your paper I mean you can have new title sections on them everything but to walk us through different pieces of this topic and you really just keep repeating that until you have sort of the topic discussed and your subtopics about it are covered and that's sort of the research process and for most of my students it takes a while 
And if I might say with first hint, uh, for most topics, honestly, five sources are not enough to cover it in depth. We say five sources for the capstone paper because someone might actually find five big books on a topic, and you know what? They got to cover it in depth. But if you're mostly getting by on professionally written web articles, you're going to need more than five sources. Very, very few of our most successful capstone papers are really well written with five sources uh it'll vary for your teacher but at hunter's lane i start making all my students honors ib ap whatever they find 10. Uh, we start there some end up with more they may not use all 10 they may end up with seven or eight good sources cool they may go over 10. uh they may go beyond the longest student i ever have uh had 28. And it was a really good paper. It was over 6,000 words. That doesn't have to be you, but that's just what I'm saying, is that five sources probably are not going to get you to 2,300 words. And you're probably going to need more if you're doing some general web research and just looking up articles. Now, if you go find some giant books on some things and some giant scientific studies, uh, you might be the exception there. But for most people, you're gonna have to go past five. When are you done researching? Well, I like to say it's until you know all worth knowing about the topic. Uh, that may be a little grandiose for some topics, but you're really done when you yourself, without your notes, can almost look and say, this is what I generally want to say about this topic. These are going to be my major points throughout the paper. And I could tell you a great deal in depth about all my sub points on this paper. And then you yourself have come up with something to say, an opinion, an analysis, something that you feel the reader needs to know. It may be some argumentation. It may be some persuasion. That is when you're done researching when you have sort of a fully fleshed out topic and fully fleshed out subtopics beyond and this takes some time in fact for most of my seniors it's at least a three to six week process and honestly occasionally it's it's a little longer than that uh, uh, for some of them uh, because there's lots of narrowing uh pushing through it uh changing mind going back re-editing things reconsidering a capstone paper really starts from a place of mess and that's okay it's not a school assignment where a teacher gives you the notes and then you uh, uh you do the work pretty quickly and you turn it in for an a that's not how it works you start with a vague topic you got to find some information you're not sure where you're going to go with it a capstone paper starts from a place of mess and it takes time to turn the mess into the final the finished project that's really yours your creativity and that you want it to be and that's okay um you need some time to work out of the mess but you do have to work through it and you do have the time and you have support so please lean on your teachers your capstone teachers your english teachers your cte teachers uh librarians if necessary other people who can support you um kind of been working through this place of meth that can be a scary thing for some kids but you get the time to work with it and it's something that that you can truly create and make your baby uh, with your voice in our next video we're going to talk about how to actually do this what are things that we can do to research like a college student what are the good steps and tricks now that we've kind of looked at the why again jason prophet hunters lane high school uh thank you for joining us uh in sort of this first research video if you're a senior and in capstone congratulations on your senior year i wish you successful researching and a successful project